Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Thomas Van Campen once again. Um, I'm here with another episode of Tumbo Time Animates. Um, last time I was putting in the in-betweens for the blue samurai guy you see on the right. Um, I've jumped ahead a little bit just like I said I would. Um, now uh, they both have all the in-betweens and now I'm going to be overlaying the character designs, which are basically just going to be generic samurai dudes. So they're going to have uh, their long draping clothing, their katanas, and stuff like that. I think I'm going to make one black in a black robe and the other in a white robe, just to create that kind of clarification. So, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on right now. Um... This time, I'm going to go for a bit longer. Last episode, I did a little over 10 minutes. I think it was 12 minutes, to be more specific. Uh, this time, I'm going to go for a little longer, just a little under 20 minutes. Because uh, these are relatively easy to make, so I figured, eh, why not go for a little bit longer, see if I can do it. So, um, yeah, not a whole lot has happened since uh, my last episode. Uh, I guess I'll just talk about what I've been thinking about and what I've been seeing recently. Um, while I was animating this, I was listening to the Nostalgia Critic's Where's the Fair Use video. For those of you who don't know, the Nostalgia Critic is an internet reviewer. He d makes very funny videos, very informative videos that are well acted and well sketched, very clever writing. He's a great guy. And, um, unfortunately, he and many other content creators have been falling under false copyright claims. Now, I'm a little bit outdated, um, when it comes to this conversation, because, um, there has been some action being taken place. Um, the CEO of YouTube, Susan, I can't even pronounce her last name, uh, they've actually, she's actually responded to all the tweets she's been getting, and apparently they're having a conversation with, uh, other YouTubers that have f fallen under false copyright claims, or have at least talked about it, like, uh, Grade A, Under A, uh, I Hate Everything, Team Four Star, just all these people who have been falsely accused of, uh, these copyright claims and have been treated super unfairly. Um, to be more specific about the issue at hand, basically what's going on is uh, these channels who are within fair use of using copyrighted work, which means they're only uh, showing bits of copyrighted work for transformative purposes. Uh, and by transformative purposes, I mean they uh, show it for purposes outside of the product itself, such as education, criticism, parody, or research. Um, so yeah, uh, for whatever reason, they're being punished unfairly. Um, and even though if they were much, much bigger, they probably wouldn't receive much problems. I say that, but Team Four Star recently had their entire channel taken down. They've had it restored since then, but uh, they have like 2 million subscribers. So if somebody as big as them can face problems like this, uh, then you know that this is a very serious situation. But the worst part about this is, is that there's no repercussions for people making false copyright claims. Uh, not only do, um, not only do companies have to not, uh, compensate the creator for any false claims that they've made, but they, but if they ever monetized the, uh, the creator's video at any point, and the claim has proven to be false, they still get to keep the money that's uh, been made off of the video, which is just freaking terrible, man. Like, again, I'm a little bit outdated. It's been a couple of days since this conversation took place, and I know that some action and some uh, things have gone noticed since then. So, um, yeah, I'm just stating what I know at the time. Uh, I believe action is being taken place, and thank God for that, because some of my favorite creators on the internet are being uh, abused, or at least they have been abused. So, yeah. Interesting thing about this whole situation, though, 
is that uh, some creators, like I Hate Everything, I uh, mentioned him earlier, they've actually been getting more exposure than ever because of this controversy. Uh, Because, you know, he's one of the most outspoken uh, people about this issue because he is one of the most frequent victims of these false copyright claims taking place. And because of that, he's been getting exposure from the Nostalgia Critic, from Team Four Star, from Grade A, Under A, and all of those guys either have a long history, like over eight years of being on the internet, or they have at least a million subscribers. They, they have one of the two, maybe both. Um, so yeah, because of that, his, his uh, channel has been growing at an alarming rate, which I actually congratulate him for. I think he deserves it. Um, Every other day, it's like 20,000 subscribers or something. Maybe that's an exaggeration. I don't, I've never actually looked at the statistics. But point being, he's been uh, getting very noticed, and I'm actually thankful for that. So, pardon me. Um, yeah, what else is there to talk about? Oh, the Oscars, that's pretty topical. Leonardo DiCaprio finally won an Oscar. I mean, the internet's been teasing him about it for, uh, God, I don't even know how long. Just a really long time. Uh, he had, he's been nominated so many times since then. He's done so many outstanding roles, like, um, he played, uh, a disabled, uh, kid in What's Eating Gilbert Grape. He did that incredibly well. Uh, he's in the... Where does Titanic place now in highest grossing movie of all time? Are they like third place? I think Avatar is second now. And I think, I'm not entirely factual about this. Um, I think Star Wars The Force Awakens uh, beat Avatar recently. Maybe maybe that's only like within the States and not worldwide. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and say Titanic is third place. Point being... He's been in a movie that's made tons of money and has been the highest grossing movie of all time for quite, uh, or, or highest grossing movie for a while, not of all time. Uh, yeah, what else has he done? He did a outstanding role in Django Unchained where he played like a very villainous, slimy, racist person. Um, and there's an incredible scene in that where, um, He's uh, going on this rant at the dinner table, and he ends up breaking a glass in his hand. And uh, he actually cuts himself. If you see the scene I'm talking about, that's Leonardo DiCaprio's real blood in his hands. Uh, But he just stays in character. He keeps going. And uh, there's actually a story about how when that happened, Quentin Tarantino... uh, uh, stopped looking from behind the camera lens and like gave this like really concerned look when that happened but leo just kept cool just kept doing it and uh yeah so leo has done all sorts of incredible things and now in the revenant apparently this has been uh leonardo dicaprio's um dif- most difficult role according to him and uh yeah um, and you know what's interesting about him winning is that you'd think, I, I personally thought he was going to mention something about, um, how long it's taken him for it to reach that far. Maybe not, maybe that would be like a little selfish or something, and maybe he just wanted to, you know, keep composure and stuff like that, which I understand. I don't think anybody, I wouldn't, uh, blame him for bringing that up at least, but regardless, um... He actually used his award winning for uh, commentary on climate change, which I think is pretty good on him. Uh, It's good on him to bring to light things that are important to him um, and use that opportunity to address uh, issues bigger than himself. A lot of people would probably disagree with him on that, um, but he was speaking from personal experience, of course, shooting The Revenant, and um, yeah, so... That's pretty interesting. Um, I One thing I will miss is that um, I kind of miss uh, all the jokes being made about him on 
the internet. Like, those memes are freaking hilarious. My absolute favorite is the one where it's a photoshopped picture of him in The Great Gatsby. You know that famous picture where uh, he's holding up a glass of wine? My favorite picture is where somebody photoshopped an Oscar in his hands, and then right below him, it shows a picture of that uh, dream totem spinning from Inception. That is such a funny picture, man. It's so good. Um, but yeah. Um, oh, oh well, I guess we can start picking on Johnny Depp now, because he's another great actor who hasn't won an Oscar yet. Um... So, yeah, I've talked about the Oscars. I've talked about YouTube's copyright system. Um, Let's talk about... Let's talk about some animations that I've been seeing recently that are really good. Something that just blows my mind every time I see it is um, the JonTron Firework music video. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description. This series is just turning into promoting all sorts of different things that I find interesting, but whatever. Um, I love that video because it's so many talented uh, animators who have done uh, Game Grumps animated in the past, and, well, not all of them have, I don't think. Maybe I could be wrong on that, but... um. Yeah, it's just all these super talented people coming together. And even though John's a really good singer and he really nails that performance, I really think the stars of those video of that video are all the animators who took part. Um, my favorite parts are Mr. Chambers. Mr. Chambers does really cool, creepy stuff. He has a style that's completely his own. Uh, it's very, like... It's almost Tim Burton-y, but not quite. It's a little more, uh... Tim Burton-y is a little more on the cute side, I think, whereas Mr. Chambers just goes full-out creepy, and I really like it. Uh, oh my god, Cat Fat's uh, part of that. Cat Fat is a one-man animation machine. I'm not even sure if it's a man, or if he's a man, or she, whatever, you know what I mean. Um... But uh, Catfat is one of the most talented animators on the website right now. Um, he, 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 like, the movement is always so fluid. The designs are always so adorable with those giant uh, anime eyes. Uh, or, like, those giant kawaii eyes or whatever. Um, yeah, it's just so much talent on YouTube. That's unfortunately not getting the exposure it deserves. But hopefully that changes. Uh within the next little bit um yeah so as i mentioned last episode this cartoon i'm working on is part of my demo reel um i know demo reels are typically uh just collections of anime of bits of animations that you've done in the past so you wouldn't just make animations from scratch solely for the demo reel at least not most people would Instead, they would just put in the best bits from uh, uh, projects they've done. Uh, The reason I'm doing this from scratch, though, is because, um, in my opinion, I only have one really good cartoon on my channel. I mean, good enough to put in a demo reel. And that would be episode two of The Peacock. I'm going to try my best to not mention that too much because I just mentioned it over and over in my last video. But yeah. And even then, like, I want some variety in my demo reel. I don't want it to just be bits and pieces of the same cartoon scattered all over the place. I want there to be some really nice variety where I showcase all sorts of different things I can do. Uh, and the problem with that is that it's basically just this one note thing. It's basically just an eight minute fight scene or like three minutes of conversation and then a five minute fight scene. And I, and even though I'm starting off strong with a fight scene, I think I want to showcase that, uh, I want, I can do more than that. So I want to do like some 360 turnaround shots in there. I want to put in a walk cycle turning into a run cycle i want to put in some animal movement uh, and all sorts of different things i want to try different styles like right now this is kind of like a uh i don't know how you would describe this it's kind of like um the movement of this samurai scene 
it kind of reminds me of those old stick figure animations like Zhao Zhao and uh, just really fluent, um, very um, uh, interesting looking animation. That's kind of simplistic. Well, those ones in particular, they're simplistic because they're stick figures, but the real appeal of them is how fluently the characters move and interact with each other. Uh, so I'm kind of doing something along the lines of that. Um, right now, I'm just doing the bare bones, like, uh, muscular anatomy of the samurai. And then once I'm done doing that, I'm going to draw over that and put on some uh, robes um, that's blowing in the wind. You may have noticed uh, when I played this back a little before that uh, there's lots of grass and stuff blowing in the wind in this animation. I really want to play with that so that I have a frequent sense of movement. Um, that's kind of, that's very flowing and very uh, consistent, because there's nothing wrong with like a static moment here and there in an animation. In fact, sometimes it's absolutely necessary to bring focus to one particular aspect. But the problem with something that's too static all the way through, like an old Hanna Barbera cartoon, like the Flintstones or the Jetsons is that um, oftentimes it can just look bland and not very interesting. And even though you don't need like a very fluid movement the whole time, obviously, it's a good thing to implore a lot of background. Like, put in background movement the same way you would put in white noise or like a prop noise in the background of a movie. Just something that immerses you more and makes the world more uh, lifelike. Uh, it's always good to do that. The more, like, like more is more, honestly, in uh, situations like this. Um, that said, uh, this cartoon is a bit on the simplistic side, um, because it's not very detailed in the sense of like textures and stuff like that. It's actually just kind of got a shell shaded feel towards it. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to be working extra hard on this, even though it's going to end up being a fight scene that's only a couple of seconds long. Um, I'm going to put a lot of work into it. I'm going to come up with good color palettes for the samurais. I'm going to uh, put in some convincing wind movements. I'm going to put in some uh, nice looking shading, some shining from the moonlight. Uh, there's a moon in the upper left corner. Um so yeah, I'm going to try my best to make this look as appealing as possible because that's the thing about demo reels. You got to put in the best of the best. You got to showcase the best of your abilities. Um I think that's all the time I'm going to use up. So thank you guys for joining me once again. Um I'm sorry if I sounded a little nasally in this. But I kind of have a cold, but regardless, I hope you'll join me for the next video. Okay. See you later.